Hello VC, this is Vinyl Vertigo, DJ Vinyl Vertigo saying hello, happy Easter, happy Good Friday. It is Good Friday. It's about almost 10 o'clock and I just finished doing a whole bunch of stuff, working and uh, having a meal, walking my dogs, you know, putting groceries away, not in that order, but you know, just doing doing the things you need to do around the house and stuff, you know? Um, but it's been a while since, it's been a minute since I've had done a video. Um, I've been on different streams with um, with John from uh, uh, Talking Vinyl and uh, also with um, Alex at um, Beer and, and Vinyl. Also, of course, I think I did one I've been going to to, to uh, Rachel's Ghost almost every day that I could um, when I wasn't feeling so sick, you know. Um, still got a little bit of a tickle in my throat, but I'm definitely better. My hearing is just about almost 80% now, which is great. So I'm a lot better. I'm doing great. Um, I'm feeling good. So <clears throat> let's see if I can get through this. <clears throat> okay. I just want to show stuff because I haven't shown any records in a while as to things that I've been picking up. And I, I've been having a good time picking up and getting some deals. So uh, I'm going to go through this really quickly because it's a lot. And um, yeah, I, I when I put it all together, I went, whoa. <laughs> yeah, chill out, Scott. Anyway, um, I'm going to show the jazz ones first. Um, and some you may be familiar with, some you may not. Uh, some of these I got in dollar bins, believe it or not, like this, like this particular one, and I got it because I like the lineup, and I think I remember this artist from the '70s, but this is a um, an '80s recording, I think. Yeah, it's um, uh, Mikhail Urbaniak. He's a jazz violinist, does talking violin and violin. Lenny White's on this, and Bernard Bernard Wright's on it. A um, whole bunch of people. Some people I don't know. But uh, I'm really interested. I haven't really listened to it. Um, but I heard it's a pretty decent record. This one's called Urban Express. It's a 1989. It's a full digital recording, though. But that's okay. I'm, I'm not that much of a audiophile anyway. If it sounds good, great. If it doesn't sound good, I, you know... I could, it's a promo copy too, so it should sound pretty good. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. So that's one, Ur Urbaniak. Um, I got another promo copy. This one cost me a little bit more, probably like four bucks, five bucks, something like that. It's a Freddie Hubbard, um, compilation. I'm not going to take the, the, uh, I'm going to try to not have the glare. But um, um, for the most part, I'm going to try not to take off the the plastic because it's going to take forever to to do this. <laughs> so this one is uh, it's called the Baddest Hubbard, Freddie Hubbard. He's a badass anyway. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off. Here we go. It still has the glare because it's a shiny one. And this is a CTI uh, label. Um, and this has uh, song, uh, pieces from Red Clay, In a Mist, First Light, and Here's a Rainy Day. And in fact, I think those are the songs. Actually, those are the songs, excuse me. Recorded at Van Diola Studios, Rudy Van Gelder was the engineer. Um, yeah, it doesn't say the year. Recorded in 1971, September 16th, arranged by Don Sebesky. Um, and uh, it's a promo copy with got the big old sticker right there. <laughs> yeah, Freddie Hubbard. So I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm sure it's good. It's a compilation, so I'm sure I've heard most of these already. But it was cheap, and I said, you know, it's nice. It would nice be nice to hear some, you know, like a hit parade kind of of Freddie Hubbard. So I thought I'd add that to my collection. This one I uh, Wax talked about this on one of the. I think it was one of the his Wednesday night, or his uh no his Friday night, no his Wednesday night. Does does he do a Wednesday night? I think he does it with the jazz bones. Anyway, I found it. Wax, he talked about this. He goes, if you find this cheap, and 
I found it pretty cheap. It was less than 10 bucks. Young Blood by John Faddis. This has Kenny Barron on piano, uh, George Mraz on bass, and Mickey Roker on drums. Recorded January 8th and 9th, 1976. Produced by Norman Grants. So, and this is a Pablo label. Pablo. So, I'm happy to have this. I trust Wax because he, you know, he's very picky when it comes to his stuff. So, if he says you should get that, I pretty much trust him. Although, you know, I, I know a lot when it comes to jazz through my dad. But there's a lot of things I've forgotten because uh, I kind of lost my way when it comes to jazz. After a while, I was into all kinds of other stuff for a long time. So, getting back into jazz... I was thinking, you know, um, I'm trying to pop my ears. I was thinking that, you know, there's things that I don't remember from my dad. So, Wax is like my dad right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so, I saw the George Benson, um, Rick Beato's um, interview of George Benson, which is a really, really good interview. And he talked a lot about a lot of records. And I thought that I had a lot of George Benson records. But I have them on CD. I used to have them on vinyl, but I left a lot of stuff in New York, and some of those things are no, no, I no longer got. So I, I replaced some. So I wanted to show you some of the ones I replaced. Um, oh, wow, that's right. I got to pull a few more out. Actually, let's hold on for a second. Yeah, um, so I, I found a bunch really cheap of stuff that I either used to have or never had. And I'm just gonna go really quickly. Um, um, this one is like a real, this is a real popular record, Gimme the Night. It has uh, Gimme the Night on it, of course, Love Times Love. It's got uh, Moody's Mood on there. It also has this instrumental called Donora Donora, which is my favorite. Yeah, so this is like a pop jazz album. You know, a lot of people were like knocking him for going pop, but hey, you you know you want to make a living you make a living but he did good music nonetheless I mean it could, it must it might have been pop but it was quality stuff always quality stuff produced by Quincy Jones come on you can't go wrong with that um, some people like to knock him I I don't I think the man is is a he's a terror on uh, guitar he's really good and he shows great respect for other musicians which I really like. Um, George Benson in flight. This has Phil Upchurch on here. Phil Upchurch is one of his favorite other rhythm guitarists that he worked with a lot. Ronnie Foster, um, who is a Moog genius, Moog genius, I should say. Um, Jorge Dalto, Stanley Banks, Harvey Mason, Ralph McDonald, incredible percussionist. And uh, this has on it Nature Boy, which is a great version of Nature Boy. The world is a ghetto. Gonna love you more. Valdez in the country, which is a, a Donny Hathaway tune, and everything must change. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Um, so it's nice to have that. Benson Farrell. I'm gonna take the thing off for this one. This is a CTI um, recording. Benson Farrell. And this has uh, Flute Song, Beyond the Ozone, Camel Hump, Rolling Home, and Old Devil Moon. And uh, this is uh, produced by Creed Taylor. Um, let's see. Joe Farrell, a place flute and soprano sax on here. John Grolnick's on piano. Willie on bass, I love Willie. Uh, Andy Newmark on drums, Eric Gale on guitar, Joe Farrell on, on bass on some bass flute. There's some really cool stuff on here. There's other flautists on here as well. So I mean, it just has really this good company on here, and I love the cigarette box uh, artwork. That's really cool. Now this one I had, this other one I have on these. These a lot of these I have on CD. But this next one, I have on CD, but I didn't recognize it when I saw it on vinyl because it's a black cover with a photograph. 
of George Benson, but this is a reissue, I'm sure, a collector's series of George Benson Cookbook, the George Benson Quartet. Now, I have this on CD, but again, like I said, it looks totally different. But this is an illustration, and it doesn't even have a guitar player. I mean, that's kind of weird, but it's good stuff. I got this dirt cheap. This is produced by John Hammond. And, um, yeah. It's got, uh... He sings one song on this, so he, he shows that he could sing way back when. This is back in the 60s. Uh, but he didn't really, you know, people didn't really know of him as a singer until he did Breezin, really, truly. Um, he sang every once in a while on other records, but not, not until Breezin did he really break out. But that big hit, This Masquerade, of course. Um, this is also a later release. This is a, a double... Uh, vinyl. This is called uh, Living Inside Your Love. This is really pop jazz, this one. Um, this has Hey Girl on it. Living Inside Your Love, of course. Soulful Strut. Change is Gonna Come. Unchained Melodies on here. Love is a Hurting Thing. Um, it's good stuff. It's George Benson. Quality. Always quality. You know? All you naysayers. <clears throat> whatever. <laughs> I'm going to stop trying to back him up. He doesn't need any backup from me. The evidence is there. He's good. Now, this this cover, he to me, he looked kind of weird on this cover. He looked like he was trying to be, I don't know. It was just really different for me to see him look like this. But I got this record because Shaka Khan's on this one. It's called In Your Eyes. This is one of his later records. Yeah, he's a little too slick looking to me. I mean, check it out. <laughs> he looks kind of a little too slick. It's kind of weird. But anyway, um, anyway, um, he looks good though, but I mean, it's just a little slick, kind of slick looking. Very, very, um, this is what, this is very 80s looking, you know. Um, this has Feel Like Making Love, um, has, uh, In Your Eyes, Use Me, the Bill Withers tune, um, I think Love Will Come Again is the song that has Shaka Khan singing on there with them. And Kashif, uh, Kashif, producer and singer Kashif, who really made a lot of big hits for um, uh, Evelyn Champagne King, amongst others, um, and uh, Melissa Morgan, people like that, uh, and also for himself. He did a lot of stuff for a lot of different people. Kashif, he was a big producer for a lot of people. But he produced this album with George Benson, so it's got a real... 80s R&B sound to it. So this is a real pop jazz record. So, okay. So those are the George Benson's that I filled in. Um, still some more jazz. I got, I've been resisting Bill Evans because everybody talks about Bill Evans all the time. And Bill Evans records are always in the record store day. So I always kind of ignore it. I'm like, in Chet Baker, I ignored both of those because I said, everybody's going crazy for Bill Evans and Chet Baker. And so I was, I, Decided to pull out my my few uh, Bill Evans records that I had a, a couple weeks ago while I wasn't feeling so well, and I put them on, and I swear those were the biggest lullabies for me. They were just they made me feel better. Um, it was kind of a panacea for me, and um, I realized oh, Bill Evans is a monster on the piano. He's incredible, and 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 uh, his timing and his and his subtlety. And um, his ferociousness at times. I mean, just amazing. So I had to, like, you know, look at myself and go, hey, Scott, you know, hey, you got to either, you know, do it, you know, like, join. If you can't beat him, join him kind of thing. So I uh, decided to join the club, the Bill Evans Club. <laughs> no. Um, I got... Um, I had this on CD already, but Waltz for De Debbie. We don't need to really talk much about this. This is the DOL Blue Collection. Pressed on colored vinyl. I guess it's blue vinyl, yeah. So, I hope it sounds good. I haven't, I haven't even opened it yet. But I know, I know what the songs sound like, but I decided to get it. Another one I haven't opened yet. These I, none of these I've opened yet. Haven't opened yet. I'm gonna probably listen to them this weekend. Portrait and Jazz. 
I know this is good. I don't have it on CD, but I've heard pieces from this, and it's like, yeah, really good standards and stuff. This has green vinyl, um, wax time and color, limited edition. Means nothing to me, but uh, you guys could probably tell me whether or not I made a mistake. Doesn't matter. I already have it. Um, then I got uh, Collective Series. They all say this kind of stuff, but this is the Bill Evans. This, I think this is his first album. Um, New Jazz Con Conceptions, this reissue. And I love Pro Motion, so Pro Motion's on this record as well. Um, I think the other ones have, what's his name? Scott LaFaro on this one. And Scott LaFaro's on this one as well, I believe. Yeah, before he passed away. But this is before Scott LaFaro was with him. But this is uh, the new Jazz Conceptions, and it's supposed to be really, really good. I don't know this record at all, but I heard a lot about it. It had a different cover, of course. The original cover is not this. It was not an illustration. So, But I'm happy to have it. 180 gram audiophile pressing. Uh, that's it <laughs> with the jazz. So that covers the jazz. Mazzy will be very happy because I listened to him. I don't remember what video he talked about this record, but he talked extensively about this artist by the name of John Baldry. So I found this pretty inexpensive. Um, and um, it looks pretty good. I didn't realize Elton John's on this record. Um, Caleb Qu uh, Quay's on this record as well. I mean, there's some really heavy hitters on this record. So I said, and uh, the, the female vocalist, um, what's her name? Something Bell. Something Maggie Bell. Great female uh, soul, Blue Eyed Soul singer. Um, so I said, yeah, I'll pick this up. We'll see. Rod Stewart, I believe, is on this as well. So, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a heavy, heavy grouping of people on this record. And this was back in 1971. When this was recorded. So I'm happy to have this. I like the cover. I think the cover is kind of cool. Um, I love Jay Giles. So I picked up a couple. I've, I've always, whenever I see Jay Giles, something that intrigues me, I'll pick it up. I don't pick up everything of theirs, but there's certain ones. Freeze Frame, of course. I used to have this on CD. I don't even have it on CD anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but anyway. I love this cover. It's very 80s. So typical MTV-ish. <laughs> but this is uh, freeze frame, centerfolds on here. You know, good stuff. Happy to have that in the collection. And also, they had a record called, that I don't that never even remember. This, I found this in the dollar bin. It's in really good condition called Monkey Island. And they just called themselves Guile. Instead of Jay Giles band, it's just Guile. Yeah. And I don't know, it has songs like Surrender, You're the Only One, I Do, Somebody, I'm Falling, Monkey Island, I'm Not Rough, So Good, and Wreckage. Don't know this record at all. So it'll be fun to check it out and see if I want to keep it. AGK talked about this, and I didn't know what he was talking about until halfway through the conversation on one of Rachel's uh, Ghost episodes. Um, and he was showing records and he showed this. And I said, what What a strange cover. And who is that? I didn't know what he was talking about. And all of a sudden he said, Foy Vance. And I went, I know Foy Vance. That doesn't look like Foy Vance to me. That looks like Foy Vance to me. But that doesn't look like Foy Vance. I mean, that's his face, but that wig is just weird. But uh, Signs of Life is his latest release from 2021, actually. So I and it's a German press. I have not heard this yet, but I know it's good because everything I've ever gotten from Foy Vance is amazing. He's a great soul singer from um, from Ireland. He's unbelievable, Unbe I mean it, unbelievable. I mean, if you're into um, Van Morrison or anything like that, or Joe Cocker, you're gonna dig this guy. He's amazing, amazing. Don't let the cover fool you. This guy blows, let me tell you. So, Foy Vance, Signs of Life. Catch it. 
I never had this on vinyl. I don't know if it was ever on vinyl before in America. I don't know, because this is a European pressing, I believe. I don't even think this is an American pressing. But it's Motown, and it is... I got it at Target, pretty cheap. Erica Badu, Badu is a classic record. This is classic. This has, like, on and on, Rimshot, Apple Tree, Other Side of the Game. I mean, every song is amazing. Next Lifetime, um, certainly, uh, Drama. It's, it's, every, it's, it's cool. And it's got some extras. It's got the Rimshot outro. Well, no, I don't think that's extras. That was on the, the CD as well. But I'm really happy to have this. This is such a cool record. Yeah, this is a very, very cool record. Um, I wish he kept making music like that. I mean, I, I love, don't get me wrong, I love um, Erica Badu's records, but sometimes some of her records are a little bit more challenging to get into, whereas this one, it's just, it's like butter. This, this is a great, if, if, this is a great starting point for Erica Badu. This or, the, or Baduism, which is her, I mean, uh, Baduism Live, which is amazing, and that has Tyrone on it, which is really cool. So, Yeah. Tyrone's one of my favorite songs by her. Keeping in that vein of Neo Soul, even though they don't like the name Neo Soul, I picked this up because it was dirt cheap. Um, and it's really good. Uh, it takes a little while to get into, but once you're into it, it just takes hold of you. And it was the latest and last, the, the most recent record. He hasn't done anything since. D'Angelo and the Vanguard, Black Messiah. It's got 1,000 Deaths on it, The Charade. It's got Really Love. It's got The Door on it. But my favorite tune on this is Sugar Daddy. Fantastic record. Fantastic record. Yeah. It's a double. He's so cool. <laughs> D'Angelo. Gotta love him. I mean, the guy only has, what, three studio records, a great greatest hits record, and a live album that's really good live in Paris. That's all he's got. There's bootlegs out there, but it's only, it's only got three s studio records. Only three. Brown Sugar, Voodoo, and this. Black Messiah. And I'm like, dude, you need to put out more material. You're too good to not put out more material. He will whenever he feels like it. Um, next up, I got this really cheap, like less than 10 bucks, double LP, Patty Griffin, beautiful package, Servant of Love, don't know anything about this, but Patty Griffin's one of those voices that very distinctive, she's Americana, folk rock, she's worked with Robert Plant, she, she worked in his band for a while, um, she is a great songwriter, amazing singer, very emotional. She reminds me, she, I think she, she reminds me, um, not timbre-wise, but just, um, just the energy and the attitude of Linda Ronstadt. When Linda Ronstadt, in the early days of Linda Ronstadt, you know what I mean? Or uh, Emmy Lou Harris, you know, has that kind of pained, hard, edgy, you know, rock, but also folky country sound. Yeah, Patty Griffin. If you don't know Patty Griffin, just check check out some of her early stuff. She's she's amazing. She's got a lot of releases, a lot of releases. But this is her latest one. And at first, I thought this was a Wilco record, but because the way it was designed, I looked at it really quickly and I said, "That's not Wilco. That's Patty Griffin." Oh my God! So yeah. So, this I just got in the mail, like, two weeks, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I was talking to Alex from Beer and Vinyl about this, because he had ordered his, I already ordered mine, and he was, he had just ordered his, and he was waiting on it, but I had just received mine, and this is the Sincere's from Coal Mine Records, yet another great band from that great label from Ohio. And uh, these are Mexican American guys and gals who do this soul, this uh, retro soul, 
very much like um, the uh, like the indications, Duran Jones indications, or like uh, the Sacred Souls or uh, Orgone, Ghost Funk Orchestra, that kind of stuff. They're really really good. Sincerely yours, and the song I like right now is it's it's such a shame, or uh, can't call me baby. Yeah, some really good stuff. It brings you back to like the seventies, seventies soul. You know the seventies soul guys, the soul groups. Yeah, really good stuff. Today I was at Bananas and I found this. It was in the. Um, the, the new the new uh, the new finds uh, bin and I had to get it I know I already got the MoFi and I have it on CD I love Bill Withers still Bill got this relatively cheap and it's an early pressing someone online was telling me when I showed my MoFi they said that's all right but get a get an early pressing if you can find an early pressing cheap of that it's better. The sound is just better. And so I said, well, we'll see. We'll find out now. But what I do like about this, it has this kind of, that the MoFi doesn't have that. The MoFi doesn't do this. It's a, it's a gatefold, but it goes this way. This is how it was supposed to be. So I'm really happy to have this like that, you know. So I'm going to listen to this, and I'm going to actually do a comparison. I've never done a comparison before. This is going to be my first, probably my only comparison. But, and I probably will keep both, of course. Still Bill. And you know, this has, um, let me in your life. Who is he and what is he to you? Use me, lean on me. Um, I don't want you on my mind. I mean, this is just really cool. He looks pretty, pretty happy, don't you think? <laughs> Very cool guy. And last but not least, I have to show this. I'm so excited. I'm over the moon. I got this in the mail from, from um, England, from the UK, in this record store. And I got it. And this, it was my second purchase on Discogs. I was really nervous because I hadn't heard anything about it. And finally, it showed up at work. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. Never had this on vinyl. I don't believe I ever had this. No, I did not. Because when this came out, this record came out, CDs were all the rage. And you didn't get vinyl anymore. So I never got this on vinyl. And so when I was looking for this on vinyl, I couldn't find it. Until I looked on Discogs. And I said, oh, there's an import. Or there's a Europe there's European or uh, English, you know, UK version of this. There's no American. And I looked it up. There's no American versions of this. Shaka Khan's. The woman I am. I'm so freaking blown away and happy. No, I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> this is a grail for me. Um, this, uh, I think it's a, a UK pressing, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's French. It's a French pressing. And... Um, yeah. Oof. This has the big hit, Love You All My Lifetime. This has also, Don't Look At Me This Way, That Way. You Can Make the Story Right, which is like, oh. Um, when I was the, the co-chair of St. Pete Pride back in 20, I don't know, 20, 2008, maybe 08, 09, something like that, um, we had to do what, uh, you know, when I was a co-chair, people who were on the board of St. Pete Pride were putting together Pride for that year. We had to go to this club called George's Alibis, and we had to do something called a turnabout, which I've never, I've only done it once. I never did it before, and I probably, will, no, I did it once before, but I would never do it again because I just don't, I'm not into doing it for myself. I love watching it, but basically turnabout means you have to dress and drag and perform. And so I decided to dress like Shaka Khan, get a big, wild, crazy, long hair wig, and make myself up like Shaka Khan, which I really did, and I could put big boobs, because he had big boobs and everything. And I went out there and I sang, um, I'm Every Woman, um, 
Love you all my lifetime. Uh, tell me something good. And I did. You can make the story right. Yeah. And I'm telling you, there were people coming up to me thinking, <laughs> they were like, you were doing Shaka so good. You should do this professionally. I'm like, no, thank you. No, I don't like wearing high heels. Sorry. Sorry. Don't do it. I'm not not into it. Not into it. Makeup's too greasy and hot and gross, and I don't like wearing wigs. It's just too much. I don't, I don't know. I like watching it, but I don't like doing it. Um, <laughs> so you won't see me dressed up in drag. But uh, I'm so happy to have this. I told all that story just because I had hair like something like that when I did the turnabout like Shaka Khan. Oh, my God. Love this woman. Love this album. And um, I would love to get a vinyl version of uh, Come to My House, which is produced by Prince. I'm going to see if I can find that. Somebody's got to have it out there on vinyl. I'd like to get it. I have just about everything else by Shaka, so... But that's it. Um, you know, I had to finish up. This is my finale because I'm so... When it came in the mail, I just... I didn't want to work that day when I saw the record. I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So happy. Um, I know. I'm like a little kid. But uh, Shaka just makes me crazy. I love her. So, anyway, um, that's it. Uh, so, I hope you had fun looking at my finds. Um, hope this inspires you to show what you have. If you have anything you'd like to say about any of those records um, or any of those artists or how silly I've been today, um, put something in the comment section. Um, you can like it, like uh, this video, or if you haven't subbed, you can sub, become a sub, and you can see more videos. But uh, that's it. Um, take care and keep listening to great music. Happy Easter.